Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for attending this section. I wish uh, all of you uh, are doing well and keep uh, healthy. For this section, I will share some initial analysis on oil and gas seismic data processing computing requirements and arm 64's competence. Uh, the first, okay, I'm a uh, computing. Well, let me go. Would that go to the? Oh, yeah. Okay. So I'm playing. I'm playing. Right? Yeah. So the first, I am a computing architect and not a professional in oil and gas industry. But in the past several years, I had a lot of communication with oil and gas industry experts about their needs for HPC for seismic data processing and uh, laser wire simulation. Uh, the motivation for this work is to find new computing hungry applications and improvement opportunities for computing architecture. As uh, so anyway, the computing challenges in other industries, other opportunity for our computing industry. Uh, there are a lot of articles talking about the potential and challenges of food waveform inversion for seismic data processing applications. For example, the FWI Working Group claimed in 2019 uh, that FWI is the final and ultimate solution for seismic inversion and imaging. Uh, DUG a uh, seismic data processing service leader in Australia uh, state that FWI is a process that grows compute with frequency to the factor of four or 10x growth in compute with every frequency doubling. And the computing systems of 2.5 exaflops or higher is required to achieve FWS of 125 hertz. And the uh, industry all agrees that computing cost is the top one uh, barrier preventing FWI from being widely adopted. Uh, all in all, FWI expressly high frequency FWI seems a big opportunity for the computing industry because we learn from the deep learning in the last of the several years, the application drive the algorithm and the algorithm drive the architecture of the microprocessor and the computing system. Uh, for example, uh, from the deep learning, uh, we used convolution algorithm and the convolution algorithm use a lot of the metric uh, multiply and add application and also uh, use the uh, FP32 and BF16 floating point format. So right now all of the processors are supporting uh, this feature. Uh, first, uh, let's have to look at some numbers, okay? Why electrical vehicle is becoming popular? Oil and gas will still play a key role in the transportation and people's daily life in the foreseeable future. The key factor for pursuing Ever more accurate seismic data processing is the sky high cost of oil and gas drill well. Uh, that will cost about on average, okay, five million to eight million per one so well, or ever and one hundred million to two hundred million dollar per off so well. The global oil and gas seismic survey is a market of about ten billion dollar per year for a research form for research and markets. And a typical survey will generate hundreds of terabytes of data for the seismic data processing to compute to generate the subsurface weather city model and images. The oil and gas explosion and production includes three activities. Uh, first, uh, exploration. That is to find the oil and gas and determine well to drill. Well to drill. The seismic data processing is the most important part of exploration. Second, 
production that is to drill and get the oil and gas out of ground. As uh, third is the prediction. Uh, this is typically we call reservoir simulation. Uh, the function is to predict how the well is changing, how much oil and gas left, and how long will the well last. Uh, the three steps in oil and gas explore, uh, exploration include step one, seismic data acquisition, or we say uh, survey. That's we use the, in, uh, we inject the seismic south wave to the ground or water with uh, dynamite or spacer air guns and crack the refracted or reflected waveforms with seismic sensor such as the op phones or hydrogen phones. Step two is seismic data processing to remove the noise from the low data network to determine and build the subsurface weather city model and imaging, which involves methodologies and the crafted seismic data. The step three is seismic data and image interpretation. That's to explain, to uh, interpret the subsurface weather city model and image built with the seismic data processing systems to determine well and how much the oil and gas is. The seismic survey data is lab core in a format called SEGY format. And the most commonly used data value format for the data trace, for example, the south signal amplitude or strength is HPFP32. Also, and the coordinate and the time step in the trace also used FP32. So basically, we would like to point here is the suspect data processing is the FP32 single presence floating point intensity operation. So let's look at different kinds of the waveform received by the sensor. After the seismic source wave is injected into the ground or sea water, it will travel, be reflected or deflated. And when the wave goes from a slower speed subsurface to a faster subsurface, it will eventually come back to the surface and detected by the seismic sensors. The sound wave from received by the seismic sensor are the aggregated waveforms, including all diving, reflected, and reflected waveforms from all layers of the subsurface. Uh, seismic sound waves travel at different speed when they propagate through different layers of subsurface or materials. So the same waveform, when it goes through different kind of material, the speed will be different. And the propagation are governed by a lot of the physics laws and equations. The more complex the subsurface layers, the more complicated waveforms received by the sensor, and the more sophisticated equations to solve for building the velocity model and the image. So before I move to more details of FWI, let's review three terms that's commonly used, okay? The first is uh, inversion. So in seismic data processing, it is a process to reconstruct the layer, the subsurface weather city model from the known south source and the opposite the return south waves. They are zero inversion methodology. Uh, for example, CSSI, RTM, RWI, or FWI, uh, a lot, quite a lot because the oil and gas is an old industry. Food waveform inversion or FWI is an invasion technology of using all seismic sound waveform received by the seismic sensor to construct a high-resolution surface velocity model. The waveforms including the direct waves, diving waves, refracted wave, and the refracted wave 
a lot some of the inversion algorithm only use one of, uh, of them for example but it, some use only the refracted wave some of them use uh, the refracted wave but uh, fwi use all of the wave receiver by the sensor high frequency high frequency fwi is the fwi technology that could utilize and process a seismic, a seismic source wave with frequency higher than 20 hertz and up to 125 or 200. That's the reason why the industry expect or prefer the high frequency is because the highest vertical resolution is uh, a quarter of the wavelength of the seismic source. So the higher the frequency, the better the image resolution. So you could see from uh, these, uh, the, the picture you see here, right, from that's the lab core of the seismic lab core. And then the inversion is to convert to the image. That was so different layer, uh, 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 showing the wave from uh, uh, speed, uh, transfer speed. Uh, and different layer. And you could see from the regular uh, no FWI to the high frequency FWI, uh, you could see a very clear uh, structure of the subsurface. The more accurate you could see uh, a clear of the structure of the underground uh, subsurface, and you would not miss, okay. Uh, the some layer that may be seen, uh, seen for example, right, for uh, 300 meters per second, that is something, it's a marble, uh, it's some kind of lock, and 100, 100, uh, 100 hertz wave, the vertical resolution is 2.5 meters. So there is, uh, uh, the trend is to, for better imaging, for higher resolution imaging, to go to the high frequency uh, FWI. In the last several years, FWI is becoming a popular tool used by the big oil and gas player to lead, construct high resolution seismic velocity models and images. For example, the, uh, the big player in the oil and gas exploration include the PGS, TGS, and BP, and a lot. Okay. In 2016, a Luther report that BP found a new oil deposit of 1 billion buckle in the subsurface, eight kilometer deep under the sea surface in Gulf of Mexico by using a newly developed FWI software. BP claimed that this FWI software delivered much higher resolution images than the previous one, uh, previous convention one. And in addition, it also runs much faster, reducing the processing time from months or even years to a few days. FWI is not new, but it's not widely used today. And the top one reason is its huge computational cost, in addition to some other data and data acquisition challenges. There are some people talking about it in detail. The FWI is a no linear optimization process, starting from low frequency to high frequency, uh, uh, consists of the following four steps. That's a simplified four, uh, four steps. The step one is to pick uh, an initial velocity model having the same source and receiver layout as the lab core data and create, uh, and create synthetic uh, soft uh, lab cores. So you remember the, the way we using the gun to, uh, to, uh, to eject, and uh, actually call soft uh, the subs. Right? The step two is to forward the model with the synthetic uh, soft lab course to generate output. So this, this process is something similar to the deep learning training forward uh, propagation. Step three is to calculate the difference and gradients between the model output and the field data. 
because we collect a lot of the data through the sensor. If the difference is small enough, then the weather city model is achieved and then we go to the next, uh, uh, go to the next frequency, go back to step two, okay, with the new frequency, that's a higher frequency, continue all in, continue everything is done. Otherwise, we go to the step four. So the step four is to, to update the model with calculated gradients. This is similar to deep learning back, uh, backward propagation. And then go to step two for the next iteration. So many iterations may require to come to a convergent model for a particular frequency. So for each iteration, the model difference and gradient calculation in the step of three trigger FP32 operation on huge matches of trillions of the entries. So that the intermediate uh, uh, data is so huge. So even for a single parameter, it will go to trillions of interest, uh, of interest. Such requires gigantic computing power. There's a, a, a paper, okay, I put the, uh, the link over there. It details uh, all of the operations and, and the intermediate data, uh, data size. DUG, that's the go down under the OX solution, is a leading seismic data processing service provider in Australia. They build a dedicated HPC systems in different cities. The one in Houston uh, deliver up uh, deliver over 200 petaflops of FP32 using Intel Xeon 5 processor. Yeah, this processor is, uh, right now it has been obsolete, uh, but they have the system in 2019. Uh, according to their experience, okay, FWI is a highly parallel processing application, which out of the need for global MPI communications, but require huge uh, P32 computation. Uh, uh, so when they pick, even at that time, when they upgrade the system, so they know Intel was obsoleting, but they picked because right, a high single, uh, single person and uh, single person uh, floating part operation that for that one is up to uh, 6.1 tera operation per second. And also it's a mini core. Because the Xinhan used like a 28 core, but the Xiong 5 up that time, the 68, 72. And also, it's for the memory bandwidth at that time. And the Xiong have the one chip MC DRAM that could provide uh, up to 400 gigabyte per second bandwidth because you have to have the fast enough memory to fit the data to all of the communication unit. Uh, does, so uh, so the, uh, the seismic data use HP FP32 data format. And we all know right, in the last uh, several years, uh, there are several new floating point format uh, were proposed. One is the FP, uh, is the, uh, we go B uh, flow 16 bit. And the other is when is uh, proposed by uh, the NVIDIA called Tensor uh, FP32, that's TF32. Uh, the BFP, uh, the BF16B deliver, reduce the required the memory bandwidth by half for the same performance, or in the other way, if we could say for the same memory bandwidth, we could improve the performance by 100%. And also the multiplier uh, are, are much smaller, so it's more efficient. Uh, it has been a uh, pool that the, with the BF 16 bit, we don't need to do the super parameter optimization to make the training process converge and also to, uh, for the same model, model accuracy. So if BF 16 bit 
or TF32 bit could, uh, could be used for seismic data processing, we could achieve much higher performance than the FP32. So that uh, we, it was uh, more study, whether or not the BF16 or the TF32 so TF could be used for seismic data processing. Uh, as so in the following table, okay, FWI requires intensive FP32 vector and map, uh, metric multiplier after operations. And in addition to the model inversion, the industry are investigating the deep learning based gun. GN, that is the generated uh, 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 the, the network, yeah. You, uh, uh, the uh, deep learning based gun network uh, and also the image recognition technologies for seismic data pre-processing and data interpretation. So to enhance the data, because it uh, for the survey is so easy to miss some of the data. So by using the gun technology, the deep learning gun technology, we could enhance the data. So basically we could add some data to make the lack, survey lack go more complete. Okay. That's, that's one. The other is uh, for the data interpretation right now, so the people using the eyes to look at the, the image to determine which layer, uh, which layer has the oil and and OL or what's other material. So we could use the deep learning uh, image recognition to automate the image uh, analyze process. Uh, that's the, uh, a lot of uh, activity uh, for, for this kind of research. So if we compare the requirement, uh, the current computing characteristics and requirement and the current um, SOC feature. Uh, I put some number over there because we have uh, zero uh, um, SOC vendors, some uh, so each have different kind of features, okay? Some more focusing on the scale performance, some for more coding on the floating point operations. But in general, I would say the ARM64 SOC will need to uh, further improve is FP32, BF16, TF32, INTA, FMA, and matrix multiply performance to support FWI and deep learning based seismic data processing. So, okay, it's cool for uh, action. I, I would say this uh, seismic data processing is a key complex and kit and complex process in oil and gas exploration, exploration and production for building a layer the high definition velocity model from the clock F332 seismic data. And it is highly parallel in nature, due to the many source and many receiver the sensor uh, survey. High frequency FWI has the best the potential to produce the highest resolution, high fidelity velocity model, but requires 10x growth so in compute, which every frequency doubling. And it's only becoming available with the latest high performance microprocessor. So I would suggest we form an industry academic collaboration project and Linella HPC AISIG to implement and benchmark high frequency FWI on ARM platform to identify the weakness uh, and also the improvement opportunities of ARM64 for oil and gas application, as well as the feasibility of using BF16 or similar high, free, high efficiency floating format for oil and gas seismic data processing applications. Uh, thank you so much. If you have any questions, please let me know. Thank you very much. That was 
quite fascinating. Thank you for giving us that overview of a very interesting HPC problem that can be uh, tackled now with the processing power that's starting to become in place. Uh, I'm looking to see if we have any questions in the chat, the links. Um, there's a link in the Zoom chat and in the YouTube tab chat if you'd like to post a question. We will keep these chats open for the rest of the day. So um, if we have to close out uh, this session at this time, that's fine. You can continue it in the uh, chat for session 317. Any questions? Yeah, the application is very interesting. Huh? That requires a huge amount of the computing power. Yeah. yeah and who doesn't like a challenge? Yeah, that, that, that's the good thing. Huh? The, yeah, for, for the people in the computing industry, we look at to identify the application and then to provide a solution. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, it, yeah the, the requirement for the computing power is so huge. Yep, but you need a challenge to, you know, of, of that nature to keep moving things along. Yeah. In, in the development of the of the, the hardware, right? Yeah, both hardware and software, actually. Yep. Because, uh, because, uh, again, like, I'm a computing architect, I'm not a professional, so I try to work with uh, connect and work with some experts in that area. So because the, the organism itself is uh, quite complicated, a lot of computation. And mm -hmm. that, that is the reason the FWI expresses the high frequency. Uh, right now, you could see from my slides, like uh, some of the industries are using it, but the frequency is relatively low, okay? It's like a 12 hertz or 15 hertz. The frequency means the source is signal frequency. So when we do the, uh, do the survey, we use the air gun or uh, some kind of uh, other south source. So for example, we use uh, a frequency uh, like 10 hertz and then we call it a 10 hertz. Uh, the reason I would uh, is why we, the industry would like to go to higher frequency if it's for the, uh, for, the, uh, for, for the resolution. And the FWI actually is also being used for the medical to build the image, mm -hmm. just like the, uh, the uh, the MIT or let's say use the the south the, the, the auto south to, to to sense that's the mm -hmm. inversion because you could you could only observe the south back from the ground and how could you know like how many layers are, uh, and which layer is the oil or gas or water or block or anything it's a very mm -hmm. interesting it, it's very complex it's very interesting uh, yeah, I, 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 I but I'm not a professional in that field. So I, 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 I try to understand the application need from the computing point of view. So I plan to work with the, uh, the, some, I, I found I someone, I connect them on the LinkedIn and I would like to work with them uh, to see, uh, to better understand their, uh, the, the, the exact requirement. So, yeah. yeah. Well, thank you. I don't see any immediate um, questions. Again, feel free to put some qu any questions you might have in the chat for session 317 or 317. Thank you very much to our presenter today for a very interesting uh, discussion. And I believe this is the last session for this track. I invite you to continue your day on the other tracks. Um, there is a track that is finishing up. Um, I believe that is track one. Uh, and then we will conclude with an hour of acoustic music uh, from Martin Jackson. So thank you for participating today and this week at Connect, and we hope you've enjoyed it. And feel free, uh, the, the videos and slides will all be posted to the resources page on the connect.lenaro.org website. Uh, we typically get the videos up there within one to two days. So thank you again. Thank you, thank you, Vicky. Have a nice day.